The topic today is the faithfulness of God. Amen. The faithfulness of God. Thank you, Sister Dana. The fact that we are celebrating harvest today and looking at the beautiful produce that God has given to us is testament to the faithfulness of God. All that we see today, they're all testifying of the goodness of God. And if we require <coughs> evidence of God's faithfulness, we don't have to look very far to find it. Amen. You don't have to look very far to find the evidence of God's faithfulness. Just take a look at your own life. Take a moment and reflect. Take a moment and reflect on your own life and your personal situation and you will see and appreciate God for what he has done. Don't have to let look far. You don't have to waste time scrutinizing what he has done for others either. Just look at what he has done for you. Just look at where he has taken you from. Look at how you overcame what was meant to destroy you. Because there were some things that were sent to destroy you. But you are still here. Amen. Look at how you survived what was meant to thwart your progress and squeeze ambition out of you. Look at how you overcame those things. Check how you triumphed and remained sane during your time of adversity. Because there were some things that were sent to send you to the loony house and to make you go off your head. But thank God, hallelujah, God is faithful. Some cracked under the same pressure that you are going under. But thank God you're not breaking down. You are still holding up. And we can only attribute our being here today to the faithfulness of God. Not our own skills, our ingenuity, or our own doing. We can attribute the fact that we are here and that we are in the presence of God, in this house, giving God thanks today to the faithfulness of God. The fact that I was able to get up this morning and, you know, prepare myself to come here is attributed to the faithfulness of God. And some of us may not, if we take it for granted that we're here, we take it for granted that we can get up off our beds and, 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 and come and get in our cars and drive here. We take it for granted that we can catch a bus. But in everything about our lives, we must attribute to the faithfulness of God. And even if you could get out your bed and someone had to turn you on the bed, still give God thanks for the fact that someone is able to do it. The thing is, we live in an age of ungratefulness and unthankfulness. And we think that everything is owed to us. Well, nothing is owed to me. Everything I attribute to the faithfulness of God. Amen. What is the faithfulness of God? The faithfulness of God is about his loyalty. That's what it's about. It's about his dependability. It's about his devotedness. It's about his steadfastness. It's about his reliability and unswerving commitment. <coughs> loyalty. You know, there are some people you can't depend on. You can't trust them. 
They're never loyal. They're not loyal to nothing. You give them something to do and you find them today and tomorrow you don't find them. And when they go it gets rough, they drop out on you. They don't stay loyal. But God doesn't desert you. He doesn't run away. He doesn't drop you. Let me talk to you this morning as calm as I can. He doesn't drop you when the going gets tough. He sticks around. He has stickability. God stays with us because he's a loyal God. You know, sometimes when things are right with, when if, if you're in a friendship or a relationship, when things are going good in the relationship and when, when you know, when everything's all right, people stay with you. But as soon as you fall into certain situation, you know who your friends are, they walk away. You know who your friends are when you're in trouble. But God stays with us because he's loyal. He's dependable. He's devoted. He's steadfast. He's reliable. Amen. You know, sometimes you have an old say an old vacuum cleaner and that vacuum cleaner sometimes I think the vacuum cleaner is old and so let me go and get myself a new one and you buy a new one or a new washing machine and before you know it they're not built to last these days they don't build things to last they break down and so you turn to the old thing that you had and you call it the old reliable well God is the old He will keep us 
and he is a promise keeper. He kept the promise he made to Abraham. He says, I'm going to give you a son. And he gave Abraham a son, even at the age of 100. He gave him a son. And whatever God promises, he will deliver. And that's why we don't have to go looking for it. Because God brings his promise to pass right to us. We don't have to go looking for anything. We get in trouble. But God, we're going looking for the promises of God to be fulfilled in our lives. But God brings his promises right into our own house and into our own lives when we obey. Brings it to pass. Amen. Abraham didn't believe, neither did Sarah, because they laughed. But God, hallelujah, brought the promise to pass in their lives. So God's promise will come to pass. How God's faithfulness works. How does it work then? If we say God is faithful, we need to know how his faithfulness works. Firstly, we need to realize that his faithfulness is extended towards whom he chooses. Amen. And I'm going to take you back to the scripture that we read, to the text. His faithfulness is extended towards whom he chooses. Verse 6 of chapter 7 of Deuteronomy. What did God say to Israel? For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for him. A special treasure above all the peoples of the face of the earth. God's faithfulness is not dependent, therefore, on anybody else's approval. His faithfulness is extended towards whom he chooses. He doesn't support you because other people support you. Glory to God. God earmarked Israel. He chose them through Abraham. I told, that's why I brought Abraham into the picture earlier on. Because he chose Israel through Abraham. He promised Abraham he was going to make him a great nation. And he chose Israel through Abraham. Abraham. So God doesn't choose you because other people approve you. He especially earmarked you for favor just as he did Abraham. There are some people who will want to associate with you because you associate with other people. That's how people are normally. Amen. But not God. He has chosen you like he said to Israel, for you are a holy people unto me, and I chose you. Okay. Nobody can go into God's heaven and say, choose these people. He did, and, 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 he, and they didn't push themselves in and say, Lord, you, you, you choose me. God says, I chose you. And if God has chosen us, then he has to be faithful to us. Oh, glory to God. If you chose, like you did, Lydia, to be your wife, it is your duty to remain faithful to Lydia. And because God has chosen us, he has to remain faithful to us because he chose us. That's why God That's why God has to provide food, Reverend Maynard. That's why God has to provide shelter for me. Because God has chosen me. And he's not a neglectful husband who marries somebody and don't have nowhere to put them. Because if anybody has to marry you and take 
just feel it in my spirit today. I feel it in me now. I said I feel it in me now that some people are going out seeking things because you don't think God is coming through quick enough for you and that's why you're going to run into trouble but if you stay put God will provide God is faithful even if we think we are not significant enough his faithfulness works even if we don't think we are significant. In verse 7, the Bible says, The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any other people. For you were the least of all people. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You were the least. And God is faithful even if we think we are not significant enough. There are, there are those of us who walk around with some kind of a complex. Wanting to be loved. Wanting to be appreciated. And we don't think we are significant enough. And so we live under the shadow. Thinking that we are not important enough. That's why certain things don't come our way. Well, maybe God in his faithfulness is delaying certain things because you're not mature enough to receive it. It's not because you're not important. And God says, I chose you when you were the least of all the people. So even if you think you don't have significance, God is still faithful. Still faithful. Still faithful. You don't have to run with certain crowds to make yourself feel good. Oh Lord Jesus. God is faithful. Even if you don't think you are important enough, God sees you as important and that's why he remains faithful to you. He is also faithful because he loves you. Oh, glory to God. The Bible says the Lord did not set his love on you nor choose you because you were more in number than other people for you were the least. Then in verse 8 he says, but because the Lord loves you. The Lord is faithful because he loves us. And that's why the Bible says, greater love has no man than this. That a man should lay down his life for his friend. If you know God like we know God today, we will realize that God is faithful because he loves us. He has eyes for us and he will not look at another place because God loves us. He loves us to the point where Jesus came to die for us. God is faithful because he loves us. You know, if you if you love somebody, you will stay faithful. You won't be looking here, there, and everywhere and looking in other people's backyard. If you find yourself looking over other people's fence, <laughs> then you'll be cautious.
in the song book that we have rejected. There's a song in there that says, the love of God is greater for that tongue of pain can never tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches reaches to the lowest hell. And then there's another verse that says, could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made to write and were the where every star could quill we could write the love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I know I'm mis misquoting it at the moment. Some 
people come into your business and they see how your business work, all they want to do is see how your business work and to steal your idea. God of mercy. And before you know it, they've gone to set up another business. I'm just using practical things to set up another business. And then they, what they do, they take away your client to build themselves up. But not my God. Hallelujah. He's a covenant keeper. He will stay with you to the end. When it gets rough, he'll stay with you. When it's tough, he will stay with you. When it's not going well, he'll stay with you. Because he's a covenant keeper. When God made that covenant, he wanted to make a covenant with Abraham. And what God did, he, Abraham cut the covenant, but God passed through that thing himself. Because he knew that Abraham, <laughs> somewhere along the line, Abraham would fail. So God said, because I know I can't feel. <laughs> I am going to pass through this sacrifice myself. And so we allow Abraham to fall asleep. And so God passed through the sacrifice himself so that the covenant remained firm and would not be broken because he knew Abraham would not be able to keep such a covenant. He's a covenant keeper. God will not let you down when everybody else. What I'm saying to you today may sound elementary, but somebody needs to hear it. God will not let you down because some people are sitting right in this congregation today hankering after things that God is not ready to give you yet. And so when you come to church, <laughs> And we worship. Come on, worship, brethren. <laughs> no heart can't raise. No heart can't be glad. Because your mind is not with us. It's somewhere else. Wanting something else. But God is a covenant keeper. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. We should remember that God is a covenant keeper and what he promises to do, he will do. So nobody should be coming in here with a long face. Yes, we are all under pressure. You don't know the pressure that I may be undergoing because I may not be telling you about it. But oh yes, when I get out of my bed on a Sunday morning, I'm heading to get into church because I know I serve a covenant keeper.
But God knows you need tenacity, you need patience, you need everything. Oh, glory to God. And you know, some of the husbands that are, and the wives, and the, uh, I'm a woman, so let me talk about the husband. Because if I was married to a man who kept straying and going off, God knows, Reverend Maynard, what would I? house, 
two families, my mom and my stepfather and myself, and then another couple. We share that small terrace house. So you step off the street, you've got some of them in Dudley and all around the country, straight in. And we all shared what we had in that little house. We didn't have much. We didn't have much. And I remember when my mother, then things happened, so we moved around a bit. We, we ended up in Birmingham. My mom went back to Jamaica in 1994, retired and went home, took early retirement and went home. And when she was going back, Reverend Bruce, she had to have a container. <laughs> And I've been back there several times to see her, and some things still lack up. <laughs> I don't know what's happened to them, but they still lack up. Because God provides. Oh, glory to God. We lack nothing. Look at this. We lack nothing. Some of us now, we won't even give people a lift in our car. But you need to remember when you were catching bus and standing up at the bus stop in the snow and longing for a lift. God provide. We've got some push now that nobody can come. Lord, am I, am I troubling your business? says that we see it in the time of trouble. 
David says, when he was hiding in that cave from King Saul, he says, be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trust in you. Yes, in the shadow of your wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. God, look after us. We have his overshadowing providence. Sometimes we get off the road. You know, every time I get off the road, Sister Chantel, I just say, thank you, Jesus. Because sometimes I see some driving in front of me. When you look in that mirror, you see some behind you, and you wonder what is going on. But God overshadows us. The other day, I got down to Carter's Green, and there was a car coming the wrong way around the roundabout. So I had to stop and just give him pass. Because if I had carried on, but I thank God for his overshadowing providence. And the Bible says also, he's a refuge from the storm. Isaiah said, for you have been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. He is a refuge from the storm. Anybody have a storm going on? Somebody said yes. Anybody have a storm going on? You have a storm going on in your life? He's a refuge from the storm. Not only is he a refuge from the storm in his overshadowing providence, he's the sleepless watchman. When you and I are asleep, God is watching. The Bible says in Psalm 121 verse 4, Behold, he that keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Oh, glory to God. He's the sleepless watchman. He's also the almighty guardian. He's faithful to guard us. 2 Timothy 1 verse 12 says, For I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. He guards over us. It's David who says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about us and delivers those who fear him. He guards us, he watches, he sleeps not because he's the sleepless watchman. I remember I was told of a story of someone who used to drive the streets of Hansworth at night time looking for young people to see what they're doing. <laughs> Think Lydia I know how it is. <laughs> we should leave the watching to God. Then stand with me. Please. Then there is his sustaining providence. Isaiah said in Isaiah 41 verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will keep you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. His sustaining providence. God sustains. In Isaiah 46 verse 4, Isaiah said, And even to your old age, I am he. And even to gray hairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear you up. Even I will carry and will deliver you. In Deuteronomy 33 verse 27, the Bible says, the eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before you, and shall say, destroy them. He's sustaining providence. Listen, you don't have to, you, you don't have to look for anybody to, to 
protect you, nor to provide any kind of protection for you. Because God is quite able and capable to protect you. I see these days, even if, if you go to certain churches in America, if you know how many guns are in their congregations, you would be amazed. All these preachers that you see, and they draw millions of people on television and have thousands going there to their congregations on a weekday, on a Sunday, sometimes so many services. They have people sitting in those congregations ready to shoot. Because they live in fear. But we don't have to do that. Because if I die on the battlefield, I know where I'm gone. We don't have to worry. You don't have to go to anybody. We have people who are wearing good luck charms. Lord Jesus. You're getting married, people giving you a hard shoe for good luck. Say, don't put that destruction on yourself. Say, oh, you must have a hard shoe on you. And you think, when I see them on a bride, I'm thinking, is this a church of God bride or what? Is this a Christian bride? What are you doing with a horseshoe? For, for, we take on every earthly thing the world does without even thinking. You don't need the horseshoe for good luck. What you need is the word of God that protects you. So the next one in I do when you come with the horseshoe, I take it off before I do the third <laughs> You don't need none of those things. You don't need no good luck charm. And some of you may think I'm talking things that don't really go like that. It does. There are people in this country right now in 2015 who are visiting places where there are people are rubbing them down with certain oils, giving them certain baths, doing certain things, telling them to take certain things in their homes. And even some of the ornaments that we buy and bring home, we need to be very careful what we are buying and taking into our homes. And I know there are a lot of uh, fashion jewelry now that we wear. We wear fashion jewelry, but you need to check some of those fashion jewelry with those elephants and all kind of thing on them and what you're taking into your house and wearing on your bodies. And even I notice now the world has gone mad with tattoo. And God said to Israel, And so we are having all kinds. There's a latest advert. Have you seen the advert with that demonic thing crawling up the arm of that man? And we put certain marks on our bodies and we don't even know what they symbolize. And before we know it, the devil come haunt us. Because we have entertained let me stop. We have entertained demons. And so, when the devil turn up, we keep wondering what's happening. It's because we have entertained demons without even knowing. We are not conscious that we are doing it. But God is faithful. Amen. So, he protects us. You don't need anything else to protect you. So, anything you're wearing around your neck and your arm and your leg or anything else. Some years ago, Reverend Maynard, this didn't happen to anybody else. It happened to me in my house. 
I entertained a friend in my house, had the person sleeping in my room. And I got back, when the person left, I got back in my room and I was wondering why I felt so disturbed. And let me be honest with you, it's not every week I go under my bed and clean out under it. <laughs> but one day, I felt the urge to just clean. And I bent down, go and move, shift the bed a bit. And it was not left there deliberately. I think it was just left. Because she was wearing that thing. And she was wearing this, she had this thing. And I think it was embarrassment why she didn't ask me for it. <laughs> because she wouldn't expect me to expect her to be wearing that. And there was this thing, and she, it must have fell off. And I just took it up in the name of Jesus and dumped it. And that thing had all kind of thing attached to it. It had a, some kind of a seed, it had this, it had, and I just took it up in the name of Jesus and I said, all right now, peace to my house. And off it went. And that person, until today, still profess to be a Christian. Still is a Christian, but you don't need none of that. Because God is faithful to protect you, you hear? When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lift up a standard against him. I tell you, I have been in my bed. And if you're a Christian, you'll know. If you know God, you'll know. I've been in my bed, sleeping. And before I know it, I am restless. And I'm feeling all kind of strange. Anybody have that experience? Yes. Strange happenings going on. Anybody have that experience? Yes. And so, you don't need anything else. And so I know nights when I have to get home. When I, when I manage to fight and break loose, yes. and I jump up, and I have to be going around the room saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Because God is faithful. And he won't let anything happen to you that shouldn't happen to you. Because God is faithful. Anybody in here serve a faithful God? Oh, yeah. Come on, give God thanks for his faithfulness. You want a job? Give God thanks for his faithfulness. And I'm going to make an appeal today. If you're in this con I know it's eight minutes past one. If you're in this congregation today, and as much as this thing is here, and if you're having an experience that you know you should be having, we are going to deal with it today. Come in the name of Jesus. Because God is faithful. His providential care is extended to us all. Hallelujah.